did he bring me to this place? And you know that I'm ever grateful for every blessing that you have given in my life. This portion of health and strength that you grant to me every day. Your love has been without question both your protection and your provision has been with me even before the day that I entered into this world. And I'm I'm privileged from every turn. I'm asking in the name of your son Jesus the Christ for wisdom and understanding. I'm I'm asking that you will instruct me in the ways of truth and righteousness that I might be able to do the things that you would have me to do. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is never so weak. My soul desires to honor you. I truly want to make you proud of me. Strengthen me now in this hour and let your will be done in Jesus' name. church and we can pray and lift up hands and shout but ultimately it comes down to whether or not we are going to do what it is that our Lord has commanded us to do thank you for joining me this morning contemplating whether or not to give God your life, whether or not to be baptized after accepting him as your king of kings and lord of lords. It seems like on so many occasions you run into this place where you God tells you to do a certain thing. Sometimes he tells you to just jump in the waters that you feel some kind of way about. Always there seems to be this question, who is going to be the master and who is going to be the servant? So many times when we pray, we ask God and we want to tell God what we want and what we want him to do, but In the realness of this, it ain't about what we want. It's about what he wants. With the servants, he's the master. But now, that's a great sermon. And perhaps even a truth. Now are you sure you want me to jump in these waters. I'm 
asking you, I'm asking you, is that what you want me to do? You want me to jump in these waters? These waters here today are just symbolic of, of the waters that he requires me and you to jump in at some time. See, it's easy to, to do things that we get excited about, but what if you ain't feeling it? You want me to jump in these waters? God, I'm asking you, these waters here, show me. If that's what you want me to do, show me these waters. Point to them. These waters. <laughs> well, you know, how do I know it's you? How do I know that that's what you want me to do? How do I know that the voice that I'm hearing in my mind and in my spirit truly is you? Because I don't want to be out there like no fool just go jumping in some waters that 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 that, that I ain't have no business being in it because that's something that my mind manufactured or something I thought was nice or something that I felt like I was ready for. I, I need to know, is that what you, you want me to do? You want me to jump in these waters? Before you enter into any situation, you need to be prayed up. The Bible says that we ought to stay constantly in prayer so that we can be in tune as to what it is his will is for our lives so that we cannot lean on our own understanding or be carried away by any false winds and doctrines, but, but rather so that we can be clear about what his orders are, the, these waters, see. Commands me to jump in these waters, and 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 I'm, I'm I I wanna I, I want to I want to honor you. I I want to do what it is that you've told me to do. I I desire to please you. I I, I praise you. I worship you. You know Hallelujah. You know you are God. You know you you're the high highest. Now you tell me. I'm shouting, but I'm not obeying. But I wanted to praise you. I wanted to give you the glory. I wanted to give you the honor. I, I want you to know that you are far above. You mean more than life to me. I want you to know that I trust you. I want you to... But you're not, you're not feeling my praise right now because... You want me to be obedient. See, no matter how much you shout, no matter how much you sing, no matter how much you dance, no matter how much you do all these other things, if you are not doing what the master ordered you to do, it's never going to put a smile on his face. And some of us, we were shouting and we're singing and dancing, we're doing all of these other things, but God did not tell us to do it. Maybe it feels nice, maybe it looks nice, maybe on some level, man might applause and say, yes, you're doing, you're giving God great service, but you're not serving God if you're not doing what he told you to do. Some people are going to criticize and scorn you. They're going to say it's easy. If God said, just do it. Take God at his word. He's never failed you yet. All of those things sound good coming from your mouth. But you ain't the one that's got to jump into these waters. And I'm going to be honest with you. I know I'm a pastor. 
called by God. I, I know these things. I know I've been saved for over 40 years. I know these things. But after all of my experience and my relationship with God, talking with Him every day of my life, there still comes times when there's just, quite frankly, some waters I, I'm just not willing I don't feel good about it. Oh, Lord. Lord, you know these waters are cold. walk into these waters as cold as they are will endanger my well-being. Who knows, I could step out of these waters and I could catch sick and be miserable and, and, and die because of doing such a thing. But those who are going to follow after the Lord can't lean on their own feelings. But these waters are cold. Maybe it was God's will. Maybe it's your will that 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 I, I I should just test the waters. That's what I'll do. I'll, I'll just you just want me to play with the waters. That's I, that's what look God. Are you happy now? I'm, I'm, I'm playing. I'm playing with you. Yes! You want me to jump in the water? You don't make other people jump in those waters. I'm going to be the only one up in here. I'm going to look like a fool. The water's going to be cold. I'm going to get sick. I'm not doing that. I don't understand. I don't see. What is the value of me just jumping in these waters? I mean, I, I, I can understand if you want me to just wash my hands because we're living in a time where you just need to wash. I, I'm washing. But I'm not just going to jump in the water. Now, come on now. I'm going to feel like a fool. What if this thing don't work out? What if at the end of the day, all you, I am is just wet? I mean, what, 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 how is this going to prove anything? What is, what is, I, I'm not understand. Now, how do I even know that these waters are clean? Now I'm beginning to lean on my own understanding. You'll never be able to serve God if you put your feelings before Him. Because God will bring you to waters in your life where you're not going to feel like jumping in. 
God will ask you the question on some level. What's more important to you? Me? Or your feelings? These waters are cold. They don't look so clean. And I would jump in. I really want to jump in, God. But I, 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 I'm feeling some kind of way because I don't know if the waters are clean. And, and I have certain sensitivities. And, 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 and the water is cold. And, and even at my age, I can catch cold and be sick a long time. And, and I've got children that I've got to feed. And I, I've got bills that I've got to pay. And I don't want to be laid up somewhere and unable to do the things that I need to do for myself and for my family. And if I jump into these waters, some bad things could happen to me. I'm not certain. And as a Matter of fact, you know, I can't swim. And then the devil comes more. Because when you isolate yourself, and rather than humbling yourself, if you begin to focus and allow your mind to become idle, then he comes in and he starts to work on your understanding and he breaks you down on core levels of decision making. Things don't make sense. Listen, this can't be you, God. I, I know. It, I, I'm gonna let me ask you one more time. Is this what you want me to do? You want me to just just jump into some dirty waters? Is that what you think of me? Is that how you want me to be? You just want me to just jump in some dirty, cold waters? That can't be you. My mind says, it makes no sense at all. My feelings say, don't do it. Who's going to save you if, you if you begin to drown? Who's going to come and dry you off? And who's going to warm you up? And who's going to restore you? Who's going to replace you? And who's going to heal you from the pain and the suffering and the anxiety? I'm having anxieties, God. Because I don't understand that all of the thousands of people you got in the whole world, you're going to come to me and you're asking me to jump into these waters? Oh. Make no sense. My mind can't understand why it is that you want me to do something like this. I, I, of all of the thousands of millions of things that I could do to, to, to honor you, to praise you, I, I, I tithe, I, I work in the church, I do a lot of good things and I try to turn the other cheek, I try to do the right thing, but this thing that you're asking me to do right here, this don't make no sense to me. I see no value in my mind. Can I comprehend why would you, God, ask me to do such a thing as jump into these waters? I pause now because he's talking to somebody too. Not just me. But I'm not ready. See the struggle with with committing yourself to something that God has required you to do. The struggle becomes with, 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 with dealing with your feelings and dealings with your intelligence because you somehow begin to start to argue back and forth with God. But God is not arguing because he's consistent. The more you argue, you're just working yourself up into a, 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 to a stir, to a ruckus, into a fervency. But God is consistent. And one thing about what God said, he's not going to change his mind. He's not going to sway. He's not going to turn away. He is committed You're going to honor him. You. He 
must be the king. I hear somebody out there judging me. I know somebody out there is saying, well, just jump in the water. There ain't no danger in God's water. That, that's what I used to hear the older people saying. There ain't no danger in God's water. That sounds good. You want me to jump in because you would love to see me jump in there and splash. But it, 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 I'm not ready for all of that. And so I tell him, Give me a sign. Show me that that's what you want me to do. Show me. Give me a sign. I'm not. I, I, I'm. I'm sorry to be so weak in the faith, but is that what you want me to do? Show me. I'm asking you. I, I'm. 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 I know I might be getting all stirred up, but I diligently want to know if this is what you want me to do. To just jump into these waters, these nasty cold waters, these uncertain, unsafe waters. That's what you want me to do. Show me. Showing you signs, has it? Remember, he told you to leave the relationship. in some cases God will deliver us from the evil we'll run right back to it in fact on some level I'm believing that God is trying to tell you something your feelings your fear are the manipulating strings of the enemy. Your intellect, your mind. That is the, the TV screen that the enemy comes and he broadcasts all kinds of evils and all kinds of videos that, that cause you to become paralyzed with fear. Jump out in them waters, you ain't gonna be able to pay your bills. If you jump out in those waters, people gonna laugh at you. If you jump in those waters, some bad things are going to happen. Remember the last time you did something like this and it turned out bad for you. But listen, you need to learn how to count everything as joy because all things work together for the good of those that love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose. Learn how to stop sitting idly by and letting the devil work your mind with all kinds of videos from the past. Stop acting like you specialize in your past. You don't specialize in your past or your present. And you definitely don't specialize in your future. God has always been God. And all by himself. But the bottom line is... Is it fear? Is it your feelings? Or is it your comfort zone? I believe some of the reasons why we don't follow the Lord. If the truth is told, it's not just because we're feeling some kind of way. 
One thing I've learned about feelings, feelings can come and go in a matter of moments. One moment you could be mad and upset and angry and ready to shoot somebody. And in the next moment you could be crying and broken and humble because you realize that the real reason why you're angry is not because of what happened, but because of what has been happening. so bad but because you're angry you push people out of your life not because they are so bad all are imperfect all have problems all have situations but you push them out of your life because you are not ready for a relationship your spirit has already been broken and you've never been healed and you've never surrendered to God. You've never allowed him to fix the places that are broken, to straighten the places that are crooked or to make smooth the places that are rough up. And God is trying to tell you don't lean on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge me. I acknowledge me in all your ways, in all your thoughts, in all your feelings, in all your reflections, in all of your actions, in all of your reactions. Acknowledge me because if you will acknowledge me, I will overcome your feelings. I will overcome your mind. I will overcome your fears. But you don't acknowledge me. You acknowledge the people that have hurt you. You acknowledge the moments that you feel like you failed. You acknowledge all of the bad things that have happened in your life. And I want to pause and let you know that things that you think are bad ought to be things that you just really give to God because you don't know whether they're good or bad. Because God is working everything for your good. I know you're saying you're delaying, you're postponing. So are you. You're doing the same thing. That's why I'm here today. That's why we're having this message today because you're doing the same thing that I'm doing it. And we pray, we pray, we pray, we pray. Lord, you sure this is what you want me to do? Lord, is, is this your will? Lord, give me a sign. Lord, please help me, Lord. I, I. But what we're really doing is just delaying because we're not ready to walk by faith. We're choosing to walk by sight. And as a result of that, we have a double mind. James said, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And that's what happens. That's what happens to those who are true believers and who have a real relationship with God. When he orders you to do something then, and with his orders, the word that he has placed in your spirit, what he has written, and you know that he is speaking to you, and yet you delay. You delay because you hope that he will change his mind. You delay in hoping that the circumstances and the situation will somehow help you to escape, but you can't go around God. You can't go over God. You can't go under God. must surrender. And yet you still tell me the waters are too cold. Yet you delay you want to say. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah, that's it. I'm gonna just
jump in these waters tomorrow. See, because when tomorrow comes, I'll be ready to sacrifice. When tomorrow comes, I'll be ready to jump into waters. Maybe they will be warmer by that time. Maybe they will be cleaner by that time. To, tomorrow I'm going to do it. And, and somehow in, in our spirit, we try to make that all right with God. We, we try to make that okay with God when we know that God has not changed because he's the same God today as he was yesterday and as he will be on tomorrow. And his word never changes. And so if he said do it, Now it comes to my spirit. The disciples. Because if you study the word, in the time of trouble and travail, that same word will activate. That's why the Bible says that raise up a child in the way that he should go. Because when he is old, he will not depart from it. If you study the word, if you read God's word, if you study it and, and you, you, you consume it and you allow it to consume you, uh, that in that moment of indecision, in that moment of fear, in that moment of feeling some kind of way, he'll talk to you in his word. The disciples come to me now in Luke the 8th chapter, the 22nd and the 25th verse. And they tell me that I'm going to be in danger of hearing Jesus say into my spirit, why is it that you have so little faith in the spirit? I, I talk to him and I say, but listen to me. He wants me to just jump into these waters. He wants me to jump, just jump into these waters and I'm feeling some kind of way and my mind can't wrap it around why he do this. But they tell me God moves in strange and mysterious ways. I, I get that. And he doesn't always give me the details of, of the entire story because he wants me to be the one that just takes him at his word. And I tell the disciples and they look at me and they say, listen, we are going to ask you the same question that Jesus asked us. Why is your faith so small? You see, one night, one day we were in the boat with Jesus. Key here in the text is they were with Jesus. We were in the boat with Jesus and he went to the hinder part of the ship and laid down and went to sleep. We thought the day was going to be smooth sailing, but you never know what the day is going to bring. But you ain't got to worry, preacher, what the day is going to bring as long as you're with Jesus. But do we even realize who it, who it is that we had on our side? We saw him as a rabbi. We saw him as a teacher. We saw him as a holy man. But you don't ever limit God. He's greater than your mind can conceive. He's greater than you can believe. He's greater than you've ever experienced. He's God. We had him right in the ship. Even when the wind began to blow. Out of nowhere. They tell me, they tell me that the wind began to shake the ship. And they speak to me now in the spirit. And they say water began to rise. The waves began to fall into the ship. And we tried and wrestled and struggled with the boat. And we were fearful because we were afraid that we're going to lose our lives. And many of us will not do what God told us to do because we are afraid of death. We are afraid of people talking about us. We are afraid that we're not going to 
want to be successful, we feel some kind of way. They look at me in the spirit and they say, we were scared. On so many levels, we were scared. We tried, we tried, preacher, we tried the best that we could do to try to resolve the ship, to try to mediate the ways, to try to overcome. Some of us were experienced. Some of us had navigated turbulent waters before. But this was unusual. This was strange. This was different. There are times when God is going to bring you to a place in your life that is going to be strange, different, and unfamiliar. It's going to attack you. It's going to break you. It's going to stretch you. It's going to pull you. It's going to scare you. It's going to jump out at you. All of a sudden, it's going to get you caught up in something that you didn't think that you would ever be caught up in. It's going to shake you down to the roots of the flesh. The purpose is to kill your carnal nature so that his spirit can prevail so that his will could be done but you've got to be willing to take him at his word you've got to be willing to trust him this is what they tell me as they minister to me in the spirit and they tell me they said don't be afraid preacher because don't do what we did we were afraid and we went and we went to Jesus, we went to the rabbi, we went to the teacher, we went to him because we knew that he was from God, but we did not know that he and God truly were one, not on that level. So we woke him up and we said, Master, listen to the words that we said to him, Master, carest thou not. Sometimes he leads you into places, the situations that so unnerve you, so shake your, com your comfort zone, so rattles your feelings, so messes up your mind to whereas you've got to make a decision. Are you going to trust yourself? You're going to take the advice of folk who are just like you. You're going to listen to your fear or you're going to just close all of that off and follow by faith. So we asked the master, do you care about us? Do we mean anything to you? He never responded. He said he rose from his pillow, stood up in the ship. We didn't know what he was doing. He didn't grab a rope, he didn't grab an oar. He did not steady us. He did not give us words of consolation. But he realized that our faith was on such a level to where there was no need for him to argue with us. He couldn't explain it to us because he didn't have the time. We weren't listening anyway. We were too busy locked in on fear. We were too busy locked in our own mind. We were too busy caught up in our own field. And sometimes God won't even deal with you. Because you can't acknowledge him. rose up and they tell me, they tell me and he, spoke to the wind. Preacher, they said, when we looked into his face, it was as though he saw something that our eyes couldn't see. He was hearing what our ears could not hear. He knew something that our intellect so small and finite could never get. He said to the wind and to the waves, peace be still. and billowing the winds that were blowing Stop. In 
then they turned to us. Looked us in the face and they said, Why is it that you have so little faith? Suddenly our mind said, We trust in ourselves. We, we trust in the voices of our ace boom coons and our friends. We trust in our feelings. We trust in our experiences. But one thing that he's asking us to do is to forget all of those things and just trust him. And jump in those waters. Jump in those waters. We looked at one another. They tell me, neighbor. They said, we had to ask the question. Even the wind and the waves obey his will. Now they look at me in the spirit and they say, Will you take our testimony? he can continue to have you all between two opinions you will never be at zero and the jump in those waters require you to be at zero because only at zero can God be your hero and bring value to your life Thank you, disciples. Glad y'all had that wonderful experience. But I ain't ready.
a first lady supported ministry. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel.